Thank you very much. Um, very kind of you to invite me and I hope I can say something pertinent. Um, I want to start with two quotes. The first is from Paul Ricoeur. Uh, there is no reason that our ability to read the other cannot blend analysis and attachment, criticism and love. And the second comes from a lead educator at the National Gallery called Malcolm Grigg. Art can introduce us to history, myth, genres of writing and art, representation, and stereotypes of race, class, gender, social change, and the changing environments. These quotes separately and together seem to me to be key when it comes to learning from creativity and critical engagement. To critically engage children and young students who are the ones I, I teach, because I teach both at HEI and have taught at school level, we all need help understanding what it is we need to attend to. So the point I want to address this uh, keynote to is the point of attention. How do we reach it? And in what way do we focus it? One way teach teachers in my field often do this is by putting two words and the worldviews behind them into a cognitively dissonant or assonant conversation with each other. So for instance, you might do that with the word Atman in Hinduism and Anatman in Buddhism. By fixing the attention on the worlds of difference and diversity that these words contain, we create a situation where there is a dialogue going on. If we allow students to develop this encounter into conversation, then gradually critical engagement with word and text and behind that, the whole world, world of super addressees, which Grieg refers to, starts to emerge. As Mikhail Bakhtin says in his wonderful books, Art and Answerability and the Dialogic Imagination, meaning then spreads wider and penetrates to ever deeper levels, as long as language is alive and still in the process of becoming. Bakhtin's idea of dialogic is deeply founded on the principle that language is an automatically othering device. There's no blame in this and no confusion. It is simply that if I speak, then I other you. This is why, to quote Recur again, knowing must combine a willingness to suspect with an eagerness to listen. For Bakhtin, being in a dialogic space means being in a relationship with the other's voice and listening hard. Paying attention like this gets us into conversation and over time into encounter, encounters which can be both creative and critically engaging too. This is a good place to be, not looking for consensus necessarily, but definitely uncertainly often alive to the answerability and the unfinalizability of dialogue itself. Language and words other us, but they can also draw, draw us in. You may think you know what the word listen means, but you actually mean the same thing as Miriam Rose means an Aboriginal writer when she uses the word dadiri. For her, listening is an inner deep listening and deep still awareness. Is that the same for you? So for me, both as a teacher trainer as an, and as in the past a school teacher, learning has to be creatively situated and contextualized in order to be critically engaging. Otherwise we miss the point of our education and remain unchanged by it. Numerous examples spring to mind and I'm going to give you some from research, training and school. 20 US, UK teachers in pairs given a series of junk and asked to model Christianity. What does it look like? It is extraordinary that a group of people, all of whom were highly trained and knew what they were talking about in a paradigmatic way, when it came they had to narrate what they meant by Christianity by making a model of it, could not agree. So the Quaker, the Baptist, the Catholic, the Greek Orthodox, all Christian, ended up sitting at the end going, what is this conversation about? It's about the fact that we don't expect the other to be other. 
a group of UK trainee teachers sitting with Sikh and Muslim families in their homes, looking at wedding albums, learning what it's like to be the non-Asian stranger on the Belgrave Road or a stranger on a doorstep when you don't know the family inside or a shop where credit cards aren't taken for religious reasons. These are both creative and critically engaging situations only if we expect and ask the student, students to pay attention to them. A Muslim ex-trainee choosing to run her two hour seminar on Islam based on only eight slides and all under the title Islam in eight objects. Creative structuring is another way of making us creatively pay attention. Another colleague in school running a whole year group discussion about quality of life through information technology on a site called Padlet, which allowed 140 students and 25 staff to all independently and in groups be in conversation with the, the life stories of Syrian migrants in 2015. To get a classroom of 20 postgrads, a classroom of 30 kids, a conference workshop or a community project to run, you need to decide as a body what the conversation you are setting up is there for. Are you trying to disturb assumptions, explore controversial ideas, manage conflict and resolve it, educate or all four? How do you ask that group to pay attention to this aim? Michael Oakeshott refers to education in his liberal tradition as being a chance to get away from the din of the world and listen to the conversations of mankind. But he was writing in the 1930s and like Bakhtin in 1917, living in a very different sort of society to the ones we live in now. So perhaps one brief comment before we listen to uh, others is about the need to learn creativity and critical engagement strategies for working with the current world of uncertainty in which we now live. If we want to give school and other students space to consider what Todd calls the complex processes of human becoming, then we might have to adapt our ideas of what those students need, what they need to pay attention to, if they are going to live with what Bakhtin called in 1917, and we can again call now, the new versions of mind and the revolutionary models of the world emerging in our own times. So to finish, perhaps I can read you the words of a primary head teacher writing in 2015, and lead you to see whether, where you think we should then position our dialogue. The biggest challenge facing schools today is preparing children for their uncertain futures. It is a stark fact that children starting work today will retire around 2080 if they are lucky. Nobody knows what the world will be like in 20 years, let alone 60. We are currently preparing children for jobs that don't exist using technologies that haven't been invented to solve problems that we don't know are problems yet. What better reason then to position our students' critical engagement with creativity at the points where they really need to pay attention if they are going to plurally move through this 21st century alongside each other's different worldviews, but in dialogue. Thank you very much. <laughs>